Right, I'm Zed Romy from Neutralize, and I will help you think better. So, what is thinking? Anyway, well, we can break down thinking, our thinking processes, into smaller parts, smaller components of our cognition. And one example is focus, another one is short-term memory or working memory. You can label different aspects of your thinking processes and then you can prioritize different aspects of your thinking processes in your enhancements of your cognition. And examples are, as I said, short-term memory, working memory, attention, motivation, learning, mindfulness, creativity. There are lots of different areas of cognitive enhancement, which I can help you with if you know precisely what you want. And one of the main methods that I'll help you improve, that I'll use to help you improve your cognition, is sleep. And there is a lot of science backing the efficacy of sleep or cognitive enhancement. For example, there's a large meta-analysis of 48 studies in which they uh, looked at 4,539 participants in SOCAL2 and they found significant positive effects for problem solving, alertness and also the long-term memory. And uh, most people think that they do what they can to get the best sleep and the longest sleep, the longest duration of sleep that they could, but really they don't. They haven't even started exploring the possibilities of efficient and long sleep. And I have several methods that have helped me sleep very well. Uh, I've gone from one hour and 40 minutes deep sleep per night, which is okay, to about two hours and 20 minutes, which is precisely where I want to be. Another intervention that I'll help you improve in order to enhance your cognition is exercise. Now, exercise. I think most people know that it enhances your mental sharpness, right? But there is also a meta-analysis, a large meta-analysis of 34 different studies this time, and a total which observed a totality of 1,449 1, different participants, and they found positive effects for. Uh, they found that. People who had greater mental health had also got greater heart health. So they were, were very strongly correlated, heart health and mental health, cardiovascular, cardiovascular health and mental health. Uh, and what can you do to improve your exercise then? Well, you can take more walks, you can make sure that you focus in on the compound movements and you can make sure that you have the right technique while you exercise. It's very important that you don't just go and do a squat like you would if you had never practiced an actual squat to learn from someone who knows how to do it. It's very important that you get the right technique and then you can start loading up the weights and challenging yourself. And because if you don't do that, then you'll start getting injured and then It'll take longer before you can actually progress and that will not enhance your cognition as well as actually doing it right in the first place, which I help, intend to help you do. It will be much more efficient if you do it right in the first place. The next intervention is nutrition, so eating right. And it was found in a study where 400 participants uh, were included that the people who are obese, uh, which indicates overeating, uh, 
and not eating the right things, but not for all reasons. They didn't eat, they performed much worse on cognitive tests uh, that measured focus, learning, intelligence, and cognitive flexibility. Uh, so eating well and eating not too much is very important for cognitive performance. And there are quite a few interventions or changes that you can do to how you eat, which will improve your cognitive performance. Uh, but it does vary from individual to individual how one responds to certain foods and how uh, one should eat for optimal cognitive performance. So that is something that we'll look into as well, uh, you and I, as I consult you. Uh, and the next intervention is mindfulness. And mindfulness has been shown in a large meta-analysis in which 33 studies were uh, analyzed in uh, which uh, a totality of 3,666 participants were included. And in these studies, uh, overall, it was found that mindfulness improves anxiety, stress, and depression. Uh, and if you can reduce all the, those three, then you'll have much better cognitive performance. Uh, for example, it has been shown that depression is often mediated in the brain by a mechanism uh, in a brain area in which you, which is crucial, it, the functioning of that brain area called the hippocampus is crucial for learning and memory. And often in depression, this brain area has impaired functioning. So learning and memory is often worse in people with depression. I'm not completely sure that there is any uh, large-scale meta-analysis showing this, but mechanistically it has been uh, proposed by many, uh, many prominent researchers that this is uh, mechanistically sound, that hippocampal uh, neurogenesis uh, in particular will reduce if, if you have that, that means you're probably not, it's, you're gonna have a less probability of being depressed, and if you have that, you're also gonna probably learn and remember better. Um, so, back to mindfulness. How will I help you integrate mindfulness into your life better so that you can perform better cognitively, so that you can become less anxious Become less stressed in order to and depressed to perform better cognitively. Well, I'll assess your current mindfulness practice, and then we'll work out a way for you to probably increase it. It's what most people need to increase the time they actually sit down and observe what is going on in their mind, um, but also change what it is that you are actually doing. Like, are you doing something that has not worked for you at all? And if that is the case, that you've been sitting 10 minutes a day for a couple of years and not noticed any effects, then we're gonna work your way away from that so that you can maybe learn some actual teachings from Buddhist monks or you can learn from the cognitive neuroscience aspect of mindfulness in order to, on a more deep level, understand what it is that is going on in your mind when you are observing your thoughts through your cognitive processes so that you can develop an introspective awareness in order to progress in your mindfulness practice. And then there is no tropics. We at Neutralize have, of course, or I shouldn't say of course, maybe you don't know this, uh, we at Neutralize have developed a, uh, an application where you as a user can go in and find a new topic for your specific goal or your specific purpose, what you're trying to enhance in your cognition. So the uh, cognitive processes that I mentioned earlier, for example, learning, focus, 
criticism for mindfulness. You can go in in our app and pick one of these. You can pick criticism, you can pick learning, you can pick mindfulness, you can pick focus. And then when you've picked up the three, then you can find a nootropic for you, which uh, goes through our recommendation engine then, your search, uh, goes through our recommendation engine, and then we will, based on 77, uh, no, it's 77 nootropics in total, but we've gone through 178 human placebo control studies, and 7,619 participants were in total included in all of these studies. And based on all of these studies and all of the science, we then uh, found a way to recommend a new product for your specific purposes and your specific goals. The focus areas of cognitive enhancement that you are looking to uh, prove. And that is essentially how I will enhance your cognition, how I will help you perform better cognitively. But how more practically are we going to work together for you to get better sleep, get better uh, nootropic use, get better exercise, nutrition, and mindfulness? Well, we will take walks every week, an hour, an hour walks, an hour long walks for two to 12 weeks, depending on your situation, how much I think that I can help you. Uh, and based on your focus area of cognitive enhancement, which you will define yourself, what do you want to improve the most? Is uh, creativity something that you feel you're lacking and you think that that is something that you really want to improve? Well, okay, we can use nootropics for creativity, for example. And if you feel like you don't want to use nootropics because you're not really sure and you're, you're, you're not cognitively certain that nootropics are for you, then I'll listen to that. You don't have to do that. Anything that I say to you is just a recommendation. You don't have to follow it. But I would love some open communication between us so that if you don't want to do something that I recommend to you, we can discuss why that is and then we can find another solution that doesn't entail that problem for you so that we can find something that solves your pursuit for a better cognitive performance in a certain focus area of cognitive enhancement while not leading to any problems for you in your life. So we will have a walk 2 to 12 times uh, for an hour uh, and if you're not in uh, Stockholm then we'll have a uh, Skype call instead. So uh, let's get going, shall we?